Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about why I think the Washington Commanders should try to add another offensive weapon at pick 11 or if they trade back later into the first round. So we're going to talk about some potential options for that offensive weapon in the first round. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content, trying to get to 7,500 subscribers. So please help me get there also with that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. And go ahead and follow my Twitter first link in the description. Now, let's get right into the video. So over the last five years or so, Washington has really prioritized defense in the first round of the NFL draft. You look at last year, they drafted linebacker Jamin Davis. The, the year before, it was Chase Young. The year before, they did draft Dwayne Haskins, but also drafted Montez Sweat. The year before that, it was Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen the year before that. So a lot of defensive players, and it has translated to some success on the defense. I mean, in 2020, the defense played really well, took a big step back, though, in 2021 because of some injuries and just, you know, the players didn't mesh well. So we'll see how they do in 2022. We're expecting a big jump from what they did in 2021 to what they did in 2022 but you know the Washington Commanders their offense has not been good for a very very long time and part of that definitely is the quarterback positions but you know position but also they haven't had a ton of weapons around that quarterback and now they have a solid quarterback we'll see if he can be better than that we don't know yet but he can be but now I think the Washington Commanders should try to surround Carson Wentz with more talent and they can do that in the first round of the NFL draft. And of course, if Kyle Hamilton is sitting there at 11, I 100% would take Kyle Hamilton. And if Sauce Gardner is there, I would also take him as well. But if those two guys aren't there, then I would strongly consider adding an offensive weapon. And we're going to talk about some of the options that they could, you know, go for in the first round. So if they're sitting at 11, there's a couple players I think they could go ahead and draft. The first guy is Garrett Wilson, a wide receiver from Ohio State. Um, this past year has 70 catches for 1,058 yards and 12 touchdowns. Missed a game or two. I think he sat out the last game as well. It's about six foot. 188 pounds, but at the combat, I think he was, you know, measured a little bit lower than that. Ran a 4.38 40-yard dash, so really, really quick, and you know, can run the ball a little bit. Had four rushes for 76 yards this year, and a touchdown, and can return punts as well. So that would be an added bonus if you do add Olave, because you know we don't really have a punt returner or a kick returner right now. If we bring back DeAndre Carter, he can do both, but I don't really like him that much as a punt returner. So if you have Garrett Wilson, he can be your punt returner, and then DeAndre Carter, if he's back, can be your kick returner, or someone else can be your kick returner. But I think, in my opinion, Garrett Wilson is the best receiver in this class. Uh, you know, if you watch his tape, I've watched, I think, four or five full games from him. I mean, his yards after catch ability is amazing. He can break tackles. He can make guys miss. He's solid at contested catches. And, you know, he's not an elite rounder, elite, sorry, elite route runner, but he's still a solid route runner, has a good, you know, release. Not as good as his teammate Chris Olave, but he is still a very decent route runner. And I think he will he could be there at 11, but also you look at the Falcons, they could take a receiver maybe at 8 if they don't take a quarterback. You look at the Jets, maybe they could take a receiver. Like There's a very good possibility Garrett Wilson isn't there, and if Garrett Wilson isn't there and he's their top receiver, maybe they consider trading back if he is their top receiver and they can get one of these other guys later in the draft. I don't think they're going to get a lot of these got a lot of these guys in the late 20s, but if they trade, you know, 15 through like 22, 23, I think they'll still be able to get some of these guys, but I really like Garrett Wilson and, you know, Terry didn't play with him at Ohio State, but you know, they still got that connection from the same program and Chase Young did play with Garrett Wilson, but Garrett Wilson, my number one receiver. I just love everything he can do, and yeah, he would be a game changer for this offense. He can play in the slot, or he can play on the outside, similar to Curtis Samuel, but I think he's a much better version of Curtis Samuel, and can do everything Curtis Samuel does, but a lot 
at a lot higher level in my opinion. So the next player on this list, and this isn't really a ranking, but I'm just kind of going through some of their off, uh, you know, their options, and that's Drake London. So Drake London is a big body receiver out of USC, six foot five. 210 pounds and he one thing he's coming you know he's coming off an injury where you know he ended his season early because of that injury and he still hasn't had his pro day and his pro day was supposed to be you know take place this tuesday but it's being pushed back later it hasn't been you know announced why but likely because of that injury so that little bit concerning right there big receivers with some injuries but his production is absolutely insane. You look at this past year, he had 1,084 yards and seven touchdowns in I don't even know how many games, but it's less than 10. I mean, that is absolutely insane. I mean, you look at this, 137 yards, 68 yards, 170 yards, 165, 130, 162, 171, 81 and that's like eight games or something, seven touchdowns in those eight games, really not a, a rushing factor um, at all, but he's a big body receiver, can make guys miss, he can break tackles, and you know, not an elite route runner, but he can get the job done, he can get some separation, this is a guy that's going to be a good, you know, really good target in the red zone for Washington to have, because he's that big body receiver, we really don't have that, I mean, Cam Sims is a big body receiver, but, you know, he's not obviously going to be one of our starters or hopefully not. I like Cam Sims. I think he's a good rotational receiver, but ideally he's not your starter. And someone like Drake London, who has these elite traits and has the elite production, he could be your starter. I think these two guys will probably be guys that are in the range of like 8 to 13, those, you know, that's where they're going to be taken. I see a lot of people have Garrett Wilson as their number one receiver. Some people have Drake London as their number one receiver. I'm talking about the, you know, draft, you know, quote unquote experts, you know, Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, Jordan Reed, those guys, you know, everyone putting out their mock drafts and stuff. They kind of have those two as their top receivers. Obviously, there's some people that have different boards, but those guys, might not be there. I think one of those guys will be there at 11, but there's a chance they aren't. So if w those two guys aren't there at 11, maybe Washington has to trade back and get one of those these other receivers that I'm about to talk about in the late first round. But Drake London, the injury does concern me a little bit. Let's look at his you know production, not only from this past year, also his first couple years. So the first couple years, 2019, 560 yards and five touchdowns. And his, you know, 2020, 33 catches, 502 yards, and three touchdowns. So not as much production, but I looked and he played in eight games his freshman year and then six games his sophomore year. I assume the sophomore year is because of COVID, but uh, the injuries are concerning because he hasn't played more than eight games in a single season. So that to me is pretty concerning. I just don't want to go through another Josh Doxson, and you can't be scared with these guys. He is an elite talent, so I wouldn't really be upset if Garrett Wilson's off the board and we took him at 11, wouldn't be upset because he is a big body receiver, and you know, it's not a requirement for a receiver for Carson Wentz, but it does help him a guy that can get these contested catches, like Terry. Terry's not a big body receiver, but he's great at these contested catches, and that is what you know, Carson Wentz likes to do. He likes to throw it up to his receivers to go and get him. That's what Michael Pittman did last year for the Colts, and he played at USC. Uh, so I think, you know, it could happen. I think Drake London would be a good possibility. And, you know, Garrett Wilson also is not a big body receiver, but he does well in contested catches as well. So moving on to the next guy, Chris Olave. I think he's not going to be taken in the top 12, but he might be there if Washington decides to trade back into that 14 to 20 ish range 22 25 range i think he'll be he might be there um and if they if he is i think it would be a solid pick for washington so washington ha will host ohio state receiver chris olave for one of their top 30 visits they only get 30 of these so it does show some interest so washington is clearly interested in Chris Olave. Uh, I don't know at 11 though if they would take him. I personally wouldn't be that happy if they took him at 11 because I think that they could trade back and get him or a similar receiver, you know, similar talent 
plus some assets. You look at his stats, you know, this past year, 936 yards, 13 touchdowns, you know, 729 yards the year before, seven touchdowns, played less games though because of the COVID year, 849 yards in 2019 and 12 touchdowns. So the production isn't outstanding, but again, you have to consider he's playing with a bunch of other great receivers as well against elite competition. So he's playing with Garrett Wilson, with you know the last year or so Jackson Smith and Jibba so that is taking away some of the yards that he can get but still solid production nonetheless he's probably one, he's one of the better route runners in this class I really like what he can do and you know he's great at those sideline catches great at those toe drags has a great release like I said has good speed 439 40 yard dash so not as quick as uh, you know Garrett Wilson in terms of straight line speed, but still very very quick. And again, some people like Olave over Wilson. I personally like Garrett Wilson, but Olave to me, if you can get him in that, like if we trade back and we're at the Steelers pick at 20 and we picked him, I would totally be fine with that because we would be getting a receiver who is an outside receiver, has that connection to Terry. They played together for a year or two, yeah, I believe two years, and. You know, you get some of those assets back that you lost in the Carson Wentz deal. So I would not be upset with that at all. And yeah, if we got him, I yeah, and I forgot to list his height and stuff. Uh, so he is six foot one, hundred eighty nine pounds. So it's very very similar build to Garrett Wilson. So now onto the next guy is Traylon Burks from Arkansas. So you look at him, he's great with yards after the catch. The best your two best receivers in the, you know, in this year's draft in terms of Yak were Jameson Williams and Traylon Burks. And you know, Jameson Williams is another guy that we might talk about in a little bit. But let's go ahead and talk about Traylon Burks. So Traylon Burks, you know, is six foot three, two hundred and twenty five pounds. So he's a bigger receiver, gonna be on the outside, definitely won't be playing in the slot much this past year. Sixty six catches 1,100 yards, average 16.7 yards per catch, and 11 touchdowns. So I haven't, I've done research on him, but I haven't watched enough tape on him at all to really tell you that much about him, but he is pretty solid at contested catches. He's pretty quick, and I think I, I don't know, I would not pick him in the top 20, but in the, if we, in that order, in the 25-ish range, like if we trade back, Oh, if we trade really back, I would not be upset if we needed to take him. But at that point in the late 20s, mid 20s, I also wouldn't be upset with other positions as well. If there's a safety or a corner, even a linebacker, I would not be upset with that at all. Um, but Traylon Burks is another good option. I mean, over a thousand yards and double digit touchdowns. That is very, very good. And, you know, planning a good conference. And look at that. Every single year, he's averaged over 16 yards per catch and somewhat of a threat in the run game as well with 14 carries for 112 yards and eight touchdowns and had a long touchdown run of 49 yards. So he is another option for Washington. Definitely not at 11 in my opinion, but he could be an option later in the draft, but in the first round more likely than not. Okay, so the last guy that I will be talking about is wide receiver Jamison Williams from Alabama. So this past year, he went off 79 catches, 1,572 yards, averaged 19.9 yards per catch, and had 15 touchdowns and had a 94-yard catch as well. I mean, he had a great, great 2021 season. He's about six foot two. 189 pounds and he can do everything you can throw him some screens some you know short routes intermediate routes deep routes he can do everything yards after catch are incredible he is very quick route running is great as well not super physical but can break some tackles as well i mean he is one of the most if not the most talented receiver in this class obviously going to not be probably the top receiver taken because he did tour, you know, tear his ACL in the national championship game, which is unfortunate. Happened in January, beginning of January. So it really depends. He's really young, 20, 21 years old. So he could recover in six months and be fine in like July, August, or it could take a little bit longer, like eight months. Who knows? He should though. You know, he could be back by the start of the season. That isn't, you know, and a crazy statement but you know it is a little bit concerning and the reason why i think washington might not 
draft him is because we don't have a athletic training trainer right now. We don't. So I don't know how much Ron wants to risk it without really knowing the true, the full story of the medicals. You know, even if it's just a no, you know normal ACL. I mean, he doesn't know for sure because he doesn't have a head trainer. So that to me <clears throat> might make it not happen. Uh, and you know, really not many bad things about Jamison Williams. I mean, one thing you could say is, I mean, the production his first couple of years, not great, 112 yards, 154 yards. And he was playing in that same receiver class, you know, in that same receiver room as Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, and he couldn't beat them out. Of course, everyone, you know, people react differently in different environments, and he just needed to change the scenery, and he went off. So um, I really like Jameson Williams. I think, I don't know where I'd rank him in this class because it's tough to without, you know, with the injury. If he didn't have the injury, he would be battling for that number one spot, for, at least in my opinion, with Garrett Wilson. It's still tough to put him over Garrett Wilson, but I might have to. But with that injury, I don't know where that takes him, but I would not be upset at all if we took him in that, you know, if we traded back and took him in that 15 to 22 range, I think that would be a great, great, great pick for sure. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe for more Washington content, and peace, guys.